I hear the community actually closed down from the government, the state government. Um, when they actually moved in and they moved the police force in, in the community, they actually had a task force there to actually break the community itself. Um, what happened, they actually broke the, um, the council because they had an AGM and they wanted new council members. So what they actually did, they pulled the old council members off and wasn't allowed to sit back on the seats and that's all the elders, including myself. They bought young ones in that actually just came out of school. And the youngest age would have been about 16, didn't know nothing about running communities. And maybe the eldest would have been about 25. Um, when that happened, uh, the community actually broke because they didn't have any elders on the, on the, on the council to direct the the um, community people for the right direction and um, how we did was actually look after them. But um, after that, um, when they elected a new council member, two days later, they ended up getting rid of me. I used to be the um, CDB coordinator looking after all the workers. I, I actually held a really huge position in the community itself, like um, bringing either from the CDP side, I had a team that actually that I could really trust and there was just workers in the community and there was community members anyway that um, we all worked as a team. Even though I was the um, CDP coordinator, not once I put myself forward, if the workers was working under me, I always asked them, you know, how can we make this workforce more stronger? But we work as a team side by side. I'm not in front, I'm not behind, side by side. Anyway, what they actually did to sit with us there, the community was get rid of me. I stayed in the community for about a week. And the reason why people actually move from the community, and it's very isolated, you're going to have to fly, fly in, because it's, you, you wouldn't drive the road. It'll take you a week to drive the road. It's very rough and rugged. Uh, the fly in is about 20 minutes. So I stayed for a week. And what they actually did was for, to stop people from staying in the community was they actually stop using chlorine in the water. Um, the water system was actually wasn't all that good, it came out brown. And a lot of the, lot of the kids and mums, mainly, they end up getting sick from the drinking the water. So they had to go into town. And due to the rules and regulations, what the government actually put, if you don't work for CDP, and it's like social, but it's just extra $50 extra. If you don't work, you don't get paid. And when you go into town, if, you, if you're not back in the community, you don't get paid. So that's why young mums and babies actually went into town because they ended up getting sick. Um, they couldn't make it back because of the money. Um, it's $250 for a 15 minutes to 20 minutes flight to get back to your community. And it depends on what charter you got. If you got a five, if you got a three seater, it's about uh, 250, uh, 220. For a five seater is uh, 250, 280, 280. And for a nine-seater, it's about five to six hundred dollars for a twenty minutes flight. And the people in the community couldn't afford that. That's why they all sort of supported each other. The thing is, they, when the government came through and they decided to shut the community, they had it. It was just one man shut the community down. But when they did shut it down, they promised the um, community people housing in town and plus all their gear and equipment. But they, the biggest thing about a lot of things is that during the time when I was there, they had a um, few suicides in the, in the community itself. But because like, um, it was sort of like when they got to town, they had, um, the feeling was really bad. And the police was one-sided. Didn't like um, community people going into town because the township base I reckon was running good, but it wasn't. And the thing is, um, when they took the community people out, they promised them this, promised them that. And the thing is, when the new councils actually got promises, a lot of, you know, a lot of good things. That was in RTA cars driving around sometimes. So like when you, when you talk about the two book, some thought that by doing the right thing, like they thought it was the right thing, by getting rid of the elders, it's a good thing, because they, they reckon it was too old to talk, you know, and try to lead the young ones in the right direction. But they was wrong because they didn't. They didn't, never ever saw the future. And the thing is, 
due to all that, how they, the two brother fellas, actually made their decision by listing and taking money before everything else. They actually didn't see the future of ruining the community, and a lot of the elders actually passed on now, but um, during their case when they actually had a lot of debts in the community, by hanging, mainly, and taking their own life, is that um, when they had the coroner's report, he came into the community, I've been there for everyone. I carried them, run with them, tried to get them out of mouth, and it didn't work because sometimes I was a bit too late, I was out. And when that actually happened, when they actually did the report, I was not allowed to speak up because I saw the problem in the community. I did. I went, asked for help. I went to the um, clinic, asked the health department for help. I even asked the police. I did not get any support at all in any which way. It was so hard when you, because during that time I was, I was under conditions that I couldn't leave the community. Um, I was not allowed to go to town, and the conditions was, if I had to go to town once a month, I can only visit my mum for two hours, and like I fly in, and then if it's in the afternoon, one time I, I, I missed going straight back, I had to report uh, every day. The day as soon as I get in, I got to go to the police station, report, then go back to the mum's house, and then from there back to the airport, before I go back to the airport, report back to the community. Um, it was so difficult, so hard, because I was in the conditions. I couldn't go to town. And it was, it was a bit different, you know, like I'm, what I see here in this, this little section here, I see a lot of education. That's really, really, you know, well up there. In the Kimberley, you don't have the education, what you've actually got here in this room. And the support that you've got here is marvelous. It's something that, you know, I never expected really, but yeah, getting back to when they actually closed the community down, the uh, state government said they'll look after mainly women and kids. That wasn't an issue with us. Men, we can, you know, we can tough it out anyway. Yeah. The thing was, when they closed that community down, they, they sent the people into town. They had no places to stay. No places at all. They actually waited for... They actually um, started camping with families, and then they like a, in one house, two-bedroom house, you get about 15 people, 18 people in one house. And there's a lot of the, a lot of the people that actually moved to the marsh. We got mud flats up that way. And in that area, you got a lot of mosquitoes um, and a lot of sand flies. During the night, even when the community people actually moved out of Wyndham and staying in the marsh, the police was running their little joints and saying, hang on, you guys got any bees around here or what, what did you think? Check the bags out without any authorization from anybody. Find any cans, bust them. And they was living on a mass. And I tell you what, I, it was so sad to see. And that's why I sort of went into a dark spot. I, I couldn't handle it just by watching. The thing is, when they actually closed the community down, they didn't realize the, the people that actually left the community had no money, had no support in any which way. And to try and get on social after they left the community was so difficult because you had to wait for eight weeks. They had no income, no house, no support in any which way. I was I was really heartbroken to see from my community that you know with the two god people actually sold out the community and sold out the people. But the, the one thing wrong was uh, what I saw with the people. What was really good, they had heart. They still shared, looked after each other. But the thing was. After that, after the community um, actually shut down, within weeks, like I'll say about two or three months, then the family members <coughs> actually started passing away because of the weather and had nowhere to sleep. And the worst thing during the wet, a lot of Aboriginal people don't know that when you lay on mainly cement surfaces and when it's wet you get pneumonia and a lot of the, a lot of the um, youngins and old, old people, the elders, actually passed on because they didn't have blankets, didn't have beds, didn't have any income and to see that it was heartbroken and then when they actually end up getting units about three and a half months later 
to move in. They only had so much, they had 50 people to move in there. And the community actually, the population was over, over 300. Only 50 people. People still had sleeping on a mass. Had no way else to go. Um, few people from the community, or from the township itself, actually went out and started, you know, dropping fish off to the locals that actually came in the mice and stuff like that now, and blankets. And my older brother actually, he's got a tourist business. And what he actually did was actually donated quite a few tents and swags you know, out of his own pocket. And we never ever got any government help. When eventually, when they actually gave um, the community people housing, it wasn't much house. Ten, ten, maybe twelve houses, amongst three hundred. Um, they gave them a house, but the thing is, they did not think about how community people live and why they shared, why they, you know, looked after each other. The thing was, they only get after when they started getting social money. It's only four hundred bucks, four hundred dollars. Four hundred dollars don't pay. Like, it's not enough to pay for the rent. Not enough to pay for electricity. They wasn't given any fridge, they wasn't given any, any kind of bedding when they actually got all the houses. Um, they couldn't handle it, they couldn't handle staying in the house because it, the 400 bucks wasn't getting them anything because the food up there is very expensive. It's not like here in the city, it's very cheap. You know, like a lot of people, they complain about fuel. Fuel here, yeah. if you ever go to the Kimberley's, they'll laugh because this is glory land. You know, it's only $1.40 or $1.50, $1.60. Up that way is maybe two hundred or two dollars fifteen cents a litre, you know. And for a tin of milk, if you go to the roadhouse for a tin of milk, sometimes eighteen dollars. You, you, you'd be lucky to get something cheaper than that, you know. And it's very expensive in the Kimberleys. If you know how how people look at a lot of stuff and say, oh yeah, this is hard, this is hard. Nah, this way is easy. That way you got to defend, and you got to defend by. Saying, ah, oh, the stronger, the stronger always stay strong, the weaker stay weaker. But the thing is, a lot of, a lot of the way we was brought up is by sharing. Because um, if, if I see a family that don't have anything, you know, I can hold on for another day. I just hand it over. That's what uh, people from Umulgari actually been doing, supporting and helping. When they actually shut that community down, what was strange? Because I was the CDB coordinator with all the machineries. We don't know what happened with all the machineries. We had a um, we had a big grader, we had a loader, we had four or three backhoes, we had four um, tomatoes, them little fast little cars that were moving around, just money for work. The all, all the assets in that joint actually the government I don't know what happened with the government, they didn't hand it on to the next community to look after the next community, they actually gave it to friends. And I you know that amount of money there, that was nearly half a million, because there's a lot of money that was involved, and then plus including our barge. We had a barge there that we, I used to drive, up, I had a license to pick people up from, um, from the township back to the community, you know, like, um, because I knew they didn't have any money, so I, I've actually got it from the CDP. Like I had funding from the CDP, and then I picked them up for free and dropped them off for free. So they can actually go on town and do a bit of shopping and stuff like that. But um, there's a lot of stuff that actually went missing, and the community people was promised that whatever the year they hid in their houses, when they got when the, house, when the community got shut down, they would deliver. That did not happen. My gear, I had heaps and heaps of gear. When I got on the plane, I only jumped off with a shirt and um, shirt and long jeans. The thing is, I wasn't really worried about myself because. And I, I, I've been working all my life, and I had a bit of education. But the sadness about the community side, the people didn't have any education. They're not as smart. They haven't been to school. And it was so difficult, so hard to actually see and feel their pain. And yet they still have a smile. And like now, uh, when, when they actually lost that community down, where is where's the government now when we're having problems in Wyndham itself? But most of all, the kids are actually getting sent off 
to different homes and most of all the young ones now in jail. And I tell you what, there's uh, quite a few now that's, uh, you know, like, um, it's like in a year, or maybe, maybe 30 or 40 in a year, they're taking their life because um, they got nowhere else to go. And that's why I, I was very happy and proud that I was selected from the um, township to come down and speak. Yeah, and to speak for our people, and I'm very proud that, um, to hear all the rest, rest of the people. You know, I've got a big heart here, and I'd, I'd like to say thank you to Michael and all the groups for supporting me, plus Karen and Sharon, and everybody else. Thank you.